So, Mari, there's been a lot of uh, misinformation, I think, here lately. Uh, different people giving temperature anomaly maps as actual. Um, just wanted to know what your thoughts were based on what you've seen and what you know about these anomaly maps. Well, I feel like they could be very misleading, and it's hard sorting through the data to begin with when it comes to the information regarding the grand solar minimum. And when you're given certain information, it can be perceived one way or another. Uh, the use of the temperature anomaly maps, to me, are sort of a, a deceptive practice, mainly because one-day anomalies fluctuate so vastly. It's not a good long-term projection of what the reality is when it comes to our climate temperature. Well, let's pull up uh, the anomaly map real quick here on Tropical Tidbits. <clears throat> and you bring up a great point because so many times now looking at this temperature map right here, uh, I would be concerned about a deep freeze. This would make me think that we are looking at some very cold air. But the reality of this is that what we're looking at is the temperature either above or below what the average temperature is going to be for that day. In other words, this reads somewhere between 4 and 6 degrees below average in the western New York area. Well, that average could be 58 degrees, but does that mean we're freezing? No. So, you know, when you look at these maps, you know, take caution, make sure what you're looking at is the actual temperature and not the temperature change by the hour. I mean, is that pretty much where you're going with this? My problem is these are one day anomalies and you cannot make a big deal about a one day anomaly. Like We're they did in the Arctic with the yeah. one day stratospheric warm up. Exactly. I mean, the global warmest do it, but on the other end, I see global coolest do it. When yeah. we have to describe what we are at the grand solar minimum, we follow natural cycles. I don't like slapping a label global cooling or global warming because the fact is we warm and cool depending on the cycle and right now we're in a cooling cycle so my problem is you can't take a one day temperature anomaly and then say that's how the world's going to be going forward because look at this map well and you'd I'll, never see this on uh yeah you know. and go ahead and push play watch how fast the temperature changes occur guys i mean they're rapid and so this could be so misleading in so many ways if you, if you pause it right there, just a minute ago, you made it look like that the entire United States eastern part right here, that looks makes it look like it's freezing. But let's look at the legend and see that maybe we're 10 degrees below normal. If 10 degrees below normal and normal is 58 degrees outside, I mean, you see where I'm going with this, folks? This can be a little bit uh, confusing or misleading. And I think it's a shame, especially for the uh, Grand Solar Minimum community. Look at the graphs. Look at the charts. It's all there. It's obvious. We don't have to oversell this. Global warming folks, they have to oversell it. They have to go above and beyond because they know their science is rubbish. But what we do at the Grand Solar Minimum community, the research is, is, is there. It's real. And the work speaks for itself. But also... Uh, keeping the integrity of the Grand Solar Minimum and the research behind the Grand Solar Minimum, using daily temperature anomalies like this takes away from the integrity because what it is when people use these one-day anomalies is just pure sensationalism. And it takes away from the integrity of the topic. It alarms people. It scares people. Like uh, There are some people sending me this map asking me, if we're going to be in full glaciation, they're scared. And the answer is no. These large changes take time. And I feel like a lot of people feel like we're going to be in glaciation next year, and that's not the case. Well, and that's the point. I released a video today that explains that uh, the new glaciation zones, when this does happen, and I also made sure to include that it's not going to happen during our lifetime. In fact, it's not going to happen during our lifetime, our children's, or even their children's lifetime. Uh, these cycles take a very long time to complete. And there's several graphs and charts that are available out there that will show you that right now, 
the pattern shows that we are also in a descend. There's no reason to overhype this. Just want to show a little awareness on the difference between an anomaly and a regular temperature map. And basically the anomaly shows you how many degrees it was above or below average. And of course your regular temperature map shows you current stats of the overall temperature. And the fact is, you know, we are changing, we are cooling right now. The biggest concern people should be bracing themselves for is the food shortages, yep. the crop, crop losses. Loss. Uh, we do have to be more sustainable and not take for granted everything that we had in the grocery store. So just be aware of the sensationalist uh, aspect of this topic and be smart. When you're looking at these maps, be objective. So you can look at this map and say, okay, this is a one day temperature anomaly. Let's see what the rest of the days are. These anomaly maps are best used for long-term analysis. You can look, let me see if I have something here. This particular uh, anomaly map is one month anomalies year over year. So you can say, okay, February from 2000, I think this is actually, this is 2001. Let me put this up so people can see. Not very good here, but okay. From 2000, you can see how year over year and what we're looking for when we see these anomalies, we're going to be looking for cooling year over year over year. And right now it's it's a little it's all over the place. It's you know in a cycle, you have all kinds of things uh, affecting the cycles. There's La Nina, El Nino. There's a lot more to the puzzle than just looking at one day anomalies and making assumptions or using it to purposely sensationalize things. We have to watch long-term well, anomalies, not daily. And that's why we follow the Roy Spencer temperature anomaly. This takes time. It is a very long process. And the longer you guys follow this information, you, like I said, we're not going to see this overnight. This is something that takes place over a long period of time. And each year we work closer and closer to that that possibility of a year without a summer. So just be aware, folks, that this is all just the beginning of a process and it is getting colder. But know that we have time to prepare and that's why channels like ourselves, Grand Solar Minimum Channel, are here to help prepare and educate people so where everyone is ready. That's all I had. I just want to bring uh, to attention people really need to just pay attention to what maps they're looking at, what time scale the map is looking at, and make sure they're not jumping to uh, conclusions or being alarmed unnecessarily because a particular one day temperature anomaly is being sensationalized. Just be cautious of that. You guys, thanks for tuning in to the Grand Solar Minimum. Please like and share.